Hey, what it do, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're having a great day. So we're gonna be pulling out a project that goes way back as far as the channel is concerned. It's this dirt screen right here. Now, for any of like the real OGs out there, you guys know that like I love a good dirt screen. This one right here was the original gangster dirt screen. That's the one that I built specifically for the 299. Completely built it out of scrap. It's like old well pipe, uh, flat bar that I had. This is the old drill pipe right here. Works super good. The 299 and that dirt screen were built for each other. And then this guy right here, this is the one that I made for the big wheel loader, which I sadly don't have anymore. So it just kind of sits here. As you guys can tell, it has a set of axles underneath it, which this right here is actually gonna be another cool project coming down the road here pretty soon. And then the third dirt screen that I started building was this guy right here. This is the one that I put the most time and thought into. It pretty much took what I learned from this guy and this guy and put it into a really nice dirt screen that I never finished. So originally when I set out to build this dirt screen, I built it with a backhoe in mind. It wasn't big like the one for the wheel loader. It wasn't small like the one for the 299. It's kind of like the Goldilocks of dirt screens. So I actually went out and bought material for this one. I bought some super thick three inch bar. I think this is two and a half inch. And I built this one to be self cleaning, which once we get it down to the shop, I'll show you guys what I mean by that. So this is what we're gonna be working on today because as much as I try to get out of the dirt business, somehow it always just sucks me back in. So there may be some other stuff that makes its way in this video, but hope you guys enjoy it. Let's go ahead and jump on into it and let's roll. I came from the mud. There's dirt on my hands. Strong like a tree. There's roots where I stand. It's actually a lot heavier than I thought oh, it was gonna be. I've been kind of rethinking my choices right now. Falling down on my head. This straight back. And then I'm going to swap out the forks with a bucket because I'm hoping that I can wedge the bucket underneath right there. All right, well, here goes the test number one. We are coming up to the back side of the dirt screen. So, first things first, before I can pull this out, I actually have to move the end dump, which I don't have a spot to put the end dump. And I finished crushing all the concrete that I had. I don't know if you guys remember, but I had like concrete mountain right here. So we're gonna spread this out. This is gonna turn into like a very nice area to park some trailers. So I'm gonna get that knocked out real quick. And then we'll go ahead and hook the end dump up. We'll bring it over here and then I'll be able to pull out the dirt screen. All right, well today did not quite go as planned. There's a ton of stuff that I'm like trying to squeeze in over the weekend. Next week is just gonna be a madhouse. You guys probably noticed that the first gen is not in the shop anymore. She's been sitting here for probably the better part of two years and really haven't done much to her. And so we went ahead and took her around back. Uh, she's gonna hang out there for a while until I have the time and resources to jump back into that project because it's gonna be a pricey one. So, but for now, we're gonna go ahead and bring in the dirt screen that I started forever ago because that thing actually has potential to make me some money and it's a project that I've been wanting to finish forever. So I'm gonna jump back in the 299. We're gonna run up there. I gotta pull out the old dirt screen and I think my buddy Dylan might actually be borrowing it and then I gotta bring the nice dirt screen in here so that we can actually finish it. All right, well the dirt screen is in the shop. It did end up taking a little bit longer than I had planned on. There's really nothing to pick this thing up from yet. On the other dirt screens that I built, I have a couple bars hanging down that I can actually just put the bucket on the back side of it and pick the entire dirt screen up. This dirt screen does not have that feature yet, but it's going to. So regardless, we're gonna go ahead and get this thing turned this way a little bit. We don't have a whole lot of room to work on this side or that side, and I did do some cleaning. We did get the back side of this a little bit more organized. It was pretty filthy back here. But after I get this thing rotated, I'll probably call it a day and I'll be back up here in the morning to finish cleaning this half and then we'll actually start working on it. But just getting it back into the shop is a huge step in the right direction. Yeah, I think I like this a lot better. It gives me way more room on this side. A lot of the work is gonna be going on right here. Um, that's gonna be the hinge right there. You guys will understand that one a little bit more once it's actually built. And there's not gonna be a whole lot of work going on from the outside right here, but it is gonna be nice to be able to walk around right here. But I'm gonna go ahead and call it a night. I'll be back up here in the morning to finish cleaning everything. And then we'll start trying to figure out the rest of that hinge. That's gonna be the tricky part, but I'll see you guys back in the morning. All right, well, it's been kind of an eventful morning, but we got to take care of business first. You guys can see we got the work for it coyote over here. 
The 299 is not actually at the ranch right now, so I had to borrow Ryan's tractor, but he has the quick coupler design that most good steers have. So I've got someone to come look at my sweeper. This is the Cat BP-118C. So as far as sweeper attachments go, this is like the Mac Daddy of sweepers. It's got the stabilizing wheel up front. It is pretty big for a skid steer sweeper. I did add a water spring system on it, which works pretty good. And the reason that it's up here is because I have not used this thing in probably like two years, maybe even two and a half. I don't remember. It's been a long time. I've actually had this thing on offer up like forever and I'm not in any rush to sell it because it's a good sweeper. You buy one of these things new, it's like 11 grand. It's a pretty pricey attachment. So I'm kind of curious to see if we actually sell it today. I'm not in like a huge rush to get rid of it. I'm actually kind of sad to see it go. Super nice sweeper attachment, but I just don't use it. I actually bought it and I think I only used it on two jobs and then it has spent the rest of its life sitting out here at the ranch. So I really should let it go, but I just have a hard time getting rid of stuff like this. So while we're waiting, I'm gonna go do some work on the old excavator over there. She needs some new teeth on the bucket. One of them is like super nubs and those teeth are a bear to get off. So we're gonna go ahead and make our way over there while we're waiting for the guy to come over here and check this thing out. I don't know what this tooth issue is. Obviously someone's had problems with it before. You guys can see that someone's actually cut this off, trying to get this tooth off before, and it just was not happening. I've been like banging on it with that chisel, that sledgehammer, uh, that sledgehammer. I just ran down and grabbed this big boy. We're gonna go ahead and give the old Excalibur a go. If this doesn't do it, I'm gonna have to drag the cutting torch up here because I don't know what the deal with that tooth is, but it is long overdue for a change. You guys can see how nubby that thing is. It should look like that one, or at least like that or that, but not like that. All right, let me down Excalibur, come on. Oh my gosh, what is going on here? All right, well today just seems to be one of those days, if you guys haven't noticed already, there are the torch bottles in the back of the Ranger. That is because I was unsuccessful at getting that tooth off. I don't know what the deal is with this thing. I cannot get this keeper pin to come out. This thing will not budge. There's nothing restricting it from coming off. This thing is just like rust welded on there. I've been putting a penetrating catalyst in there. I've been heating it up, trying to get it to suck down, trying to get this to expand. Nothing is working. So. We're just gonna have to melt it away now. So we're gonna go ahead and get the bottle torch fired up, cut that thing off, put the new tooth on. And what should have been like a 10 or 20 minute job has taken me way too long. I'm not gonna say how long, but it's too long. So now I'm gonna quit blabbing. We're gonna get these torches turned on. Hopefully we have enough gas. I know it's a little bit on the skinny side. I think there's enough to do it though. But with how everything else has gone today, I'm not gonna get my hopes up. Anyhow, let's try and get these things cut off. You guys can see that I did use this dirt screen a little bit and I kind of wish I'd have put the I-beam this way because we have this big open void up here now that just collects a bunch of dirt and rocks. So I got a piece of C-channel right there. You guys can see that I've already like cleaned this side off. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and push the rest of this out. I'm gonna bring this piece of C-channel up here and I think I'm gonna let it overhang that side. All right, so I went ahead and did the grinding on this corner over here. Now for anybody that's not familiar with zinc poisoning, it's awful so anytime you guys are welding on this 
Make sure that the metal that you're gonna be welding on has all the galvanized taken off because you breathe this stuff in, you're gonna be hurting unit the following day. So I would say for like 95% of my fabrication, I usually MIG weld everything. And that has some really good MIG welding capabilities. But for this one, it's not gonna be super complex. It's like in your face, super easy to get to. And I could use a practice with a stick welder. So we're gonna switch everything out for stick welding. And on a side note, guys, this has been long overdue. Put some new screens on my welding hood and it's like night and day. So I got a couple extra to spare because I'm gonna be doing a lot of overhead stuff and typically that'll burn it up pretty quick. So pretty excited. I put it on just a little bit ago and I was like, oh my gosh, because if you guys have ever welded with a dirty hood, it's just awful. So anyhow, I'm gonna go ahead and set the camera down. We're gonna do probably like a two inch weld right there. And you guys can see that it's kind of cattywampus over there. So I'm gonna kind of pry it into place and then we'll weld that corner there and then we'll squeeze it down in a couple spots in the center and do some stitch welding. Huh. Huh. Welcome to Forever, man. Let's go. 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 It's forever. No surrender. No surrender. Yeah. You know that this right here forever. Myself, they call me J-O, and to the easy E end huh. Know that we undefeated, y'all are beneath them speeds It's trying to air a grievance, but his lines are overhead Better check the air for clear, it's called a top But as far as the stitch welding on this side goes, it turned out okay um, That whole length of this I-beam is welded And then where you guys see each set of those holes There's a stitch weld there, 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 there And then that whole piece is welded too I may later on come back and weld the entire thing and fill those holes. But I'll probably do that with the MIG welder because that's gonna be time consuming and I am a little bit faster MIG welding. But I'm gonna run home, eat some dinner, and I'll be back at it tomorrow. All right, I think we're gonna make some pretty good progress on the dirt screen today, and that's because I'm home way sooner than I had initially planned on. Uh, I didn't know it was gonna be raining today, but everything got called off a little bit on the early side, so that just gives me more time to go ahead and get some work on the dirt screen done. And thinking about it over the night, I think I'm gonna go ahead and build the hinge assembly. So. I'm gonna get to cutting. I gotta relocate some stuff. This bar right here being the main portion of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut these welds off right here. We're gonna take this whole assembly and move it up here. And then I'm gonna have to build some fingers that are gonna attach to basically every other bar. These bigger ones, these are gonna be fixed in place. These are not going anywhere. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and like reinforce the welding on these. Just weld the heck out of them. So these will take the brunt of what falls down. And then these are going to be what are called the cleaning bars. So, got to go ahead and get this bar right here cut off, and we'll get it moved up top. All right, so originally I was going to be cutting these off and reusing it, but that's going to be a lot of work, getting the grinder in there and cutting all that out. So, I found this piece. We're just going to cut two new pieces, because this is actually going to get skinned, and you'll never see that again. So, I'm just going to go ahead and leave that, cut two new ones to go ahead and stick up here. And then, if you guys can see, we have this bar right here. It's got a super thick piece of round pipe in it. When I started building this dirt screen, my style of welding was pretty much just one bead on pretty much every connection. Um, you guys can see this, I just did one good bead right here. And it's not really gonna go anywhere. Um, this piece does not really move a whole lot. It just has a bunch of heavy rocks falling on it. But I since have learned that if you can do like three good passes, your welds are gonna be way stronger. Now what that means is you have one weld right here and then you can do like another weld that basically comes halfway into this one and grabs this one. Then you do another one on top of that. And so basically you have your initial weld, you have a second weld and then a third weld and then that joint is not gonna go anywhere. So working with this thick wall square tubing is gonna kind of be like that because as you guys can tell, it has a very nice radius right here. So your initial weld is gonna go right on the inside right there. And then when you come back for the second round, you're gonna do like another one on the bottom and then you'll basically stack up on top of that and you'll get three good welds. You'll do that on each side and then this piece is not gonna go anywhere. And then I'll probably weld up the sides too, but just this weld and that weld would super hold this in place. All right, so I went ahead and decided to change a couple of things. Originally, I was going to be mounting it right here, but I decided to go ahead and move it back to here and get it a little bit closer to these bars because if I were to put this hinge right here, the distance from this bar to this hinge is pretty long, and the longer you go, 
the more side play you're gonna have. So I decided to shorten it up and I think this is gonna be a good fit. So I'm gonna go ahead and weld these in place and then we're gonna start to figure out how to connect these bars to this hinge. All right, so I've got a design more or less of how we're gonna connect those bars to that hinge right there. And initially I was gonna go ahead and cut it right here, but I decided I was gonna go ahead and cheat it up three inches because that's how big that is. That's a three inch bar that runs right there. And so I moved this line up three inches and this is the outside shape of that bar basically. So I went ahead and traced it and we're gonna cut that out. So that way we can get weld along the top and weld along the side and hopefully create like a little bit stronger of a bracket that goes to each bar. And I started using the death wheel to make the cuts and then I realized that we have a radius right here. So we're gonna go ahead and pull out a tool that I haven't used in quite some time and that's the plasma cutter. I actually really like using that tool but it needed new consumables so bad. Last time I tried to use it, it was like cutting sideways and it really wasn't even cutting. So I replaced all the consumables about two months ago. So cutting this with that is gonna be way easier than doing it with the cutoff right here. Gonna have to turn the welder off for a second. Gotta rob Peter, pay Paul. Let's see, here we go. So typically when you're using a plasma cutter, a lot of people like to build some sort of guide or a jig that they can have something to like hard press and follow against. Some sort of straight edge right here. But I don't have any of those made yet. But I'm gonna go ahead and freehand this because I'm probably gonna end up beveling the edges and it's really not gonna matter too much. If it turns out like super awful, I'll go ahead and make like an actual template and I'll clamp some sort of straight edge on here so I don't have just like an awful cut. But we're gonna go ahead and give it a go because I actually counted them and I have 10 of these to make. So I'm gonna go ahead and set the camera down and start cutting. All right, so it kind of looks like we're going into the knife making business a smidge. Maybe I will try and make a knife after I'm all done with this if I have any spare material. But basically you guys can see my angle was off a little bit. It's very rough numbers. It was like just a guess. This is the first. So we're gonna have to cut it down to that point. So this is gonna get welded to the bottom bar down here. Once we have that cut in place, it'll get welded to the bottom side of this bar. All right, well the one bracket that I got installed looks pretty good. I'm not 100% sure that it's gonna work with the current length of this piece. I may have to trim this up just a smidge, but we'll see here in a second when I cut that loose, but the bracket itself turned out pretty good. You guys probably noticed that I switched back to the MIG gun because welding overhead with a stick is not gonna happen for me. Uh, it's just something I can't do. So we went ahead and switched back to the MIG gun. Pretty clean welds. Uh, let's go ahead and cut that one loose on the backside and. See if this actually hinges up. All right, so the one thing that I had been worrying about was a problem. Uh, you guys can see that I did have to trim this and that's because when this went to lift up, it was hitting right here. So I went ahead and shortened this up probably about three inches and now it should rotate freely. I haven't actually tried it yet. So we're gonna come around to the back side, push up on it and see if it actually comes up. All right, here we go. The maiden rotation. Yep, that's about all we're gonna need too. Beautiful, I like it. All right, well, I got all the flange pieces cut. Super glad that I pulled out the plasma cutter. Made everything way easier. These things have come a long way. The first one that I ever used was made by Miller, and it was like so big that they had it strapped to a dolly that you had to cart around, and it was just this big cumbersome thing. And this thing actually outperforms that old dinosaur. But anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and start grinding all of these. This is the fun part of welding. It's like the never ending prep work because we wanna have nice, clean, shiny metal on all of this not this rough slag stuff. So I probably got at least an hour of grinding in front of me. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the camera down, gonna go ahead and get to work. And the next time I pick the camera back up, we're gonna go ahead and start welding everything in place. You guys can see that I have every spot ground down smooth already where these flanges are gonna be going. So anyhow, time to put my head down and get to work. Decided we're gonna get a little bit smart about this. I went ahead and got a bunch of clamps out instead of just doing one at a time and flipping it over. Went ahead and got four lined up. We're gonna do all this edge, then we'll flip them all over and repeat the process. So we got a slight change in plans. I just got a text message from my buddy Mike. I'm gonna head over to his house because he thinks he might have some steel that we can use on the side right here. Because I don't have any out here at the ranch and the only thing that I do have is container siding, which is corrugated 
and it would work, it would contain everything, but you're gonna have like a weird lip either on this side or that side, or if you put it in the center, dirt's gonna build up underneath the I-beam or on top right there. So we're gonna go see if he just has something that's flat so it's nice and clean, and um, you guys aren't gonna see any of these I-beams once it's done. So we'll be right back. I did get the top four sides of that done. Then when we get back, I'll flip them over, do the other ones, and then I have four more to do after that, and then we just get to weld them all in place. All right, we just got back from Mike's, had a quick bite to eat, ran down to the house, had some dinner. But you guys, huge shout out to Mike. He never disappoints. I think everyone in this world needs a friend like Mike. He uh, had all this laying around at his house. It is a couple different thicknesses. We got some, I think this is quarter inch down there. This is eighth inch. Uh, I think the sheet underneath that is quarter. So I'm pretty excited because I think I have all the metal that I need now to finish this thing 100%. We're not gonna be putting the side skirts on it tonight. My goal is just to get this part functional. So I'm gonna go ahead and get back to grinding on those four pieces over there. Once those are all prepped, I'll probably go ahead and install them and then I'll grind the other four, get those installed. Then we'll see if they all lift up uniformly. And then I'll go ahead and start building this cross piece right there. All right, well, it finally happened. One of the things I like about having a bigger welder is that you can put the bigger spools of wire on here. And I have been welding forever with this spool. It finally ran out, but but since I have the camera, I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys what it's looking like. We're just missing one, but it's looking super, super cool down here. I was welding this one up when it ran out of wires, so we just have one more to put on. And then after that's done, we just have to trim the tails off of all of these. I know it doesn't really look like a tail, but uh, if you guys remember this one, we had to shorten it up. This was the very first one we ever did. So this one does tilt up. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, transfer this length to the rest of them. We'll cut them all, and then they all should lift up in unison. Okay. Oh, come on. Ah, it's getting stuck. Oh, camera. Sorry, guys. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and show you something a little bit on the depressing side, and I'm kind of bummed out because I was super hoping to get this hinge finished. That was like my goal for tonight, and I was hoping to get like the top bar assembled too, but it's just not gonna happen because as I was putting in the new roll of wire, guess what happened simultaneously? We ran out of gas, so we are done for the night. I could put some flux core wire in there, but I already put the new roll in, but the worst part about this is that tomorrow is a Saturday, and all the welding supply shops that I go to are not open. So this is gonna have to wait till Monday. So long story short, this project's gonna have to put on hold. I'm gonna have to find a new project to do tomorrow. So I'll probably be starting a new video tomorrow and uh, I'll see you guys back on Monday. It's too cold for my liking. I almost left without grabbing the welding bottles. I've got one more on the back side. Yeah, that would've made for a bad day. So let's see if I can go ahead and uh, kinda do this two-handed. Well, yes. I'm gonna go ahead and put the camera away. Uh, I'll be back in just a second. <sighs> All right, we got everything loaded up, and as dumb as this might sound, probably like one of my favorite features about my pickup is the uh, the steering wheel warmer. My hands are like frozen right now, and my steering wheel is nice and toasty. So we are gonna hit the road. I got the bottles loaded up, the gooseneck connected. I think we're good. I think I got enough chains and straps for everything today. Uh, first, we are headed up to San Marcos to go grab something I'm really excited about, and uh, it's going to be a little restoration project that I have. It's not really going to be a huge part of today's video, but I will show you guys what we're picking up. So long term, it's probably going to get painted to match everything. Um, I may eventually start going back into the rental business this year, so we'll see. I'm not going to go like on a huge scale. So anyhow, let's hit the road.
All right, just pulling back up into Caterpillar to grab that part that I need. All right, so pretty quick in and out of here. You guys, I love Caterpillar. Look at this. Bagged up, ready to go. I just walked in. They handed me my bag and said, thank you, sir. And now I'm on my way. So we're going to go grab the 299 next, and then we get to head back home. And the 299 is actually... She's in rough shape right now and she needs some loving. So now we'll be back to the ranch in just a little bit and I'm actually pretty pumped because I think today is the day I finish the dirt screen. If not tomorrow, but getting pretty close and uh, it's gonna be rad to have that thing up and functional. And now the 299 is actually coming back, I need to put it to use. So anyhow, let's go grab the 299 and uh, head back to the ranch. All right, we just pulled back up to the ranch. What a fine unit this thing is, what a beauty. Um, we're actually gonna go ahead and get the bucket ready to drop because the 299's having a couple issues. So we're gonna go ahead and get that thing ready to disconnect so I can drive the 299 off. I'm gonna grab the forks like super, super fast, come pick this thing off, set it there. And then I actually gotta shut the 299 off because she has a small leak that needs fixing. So we're gonna try and do all of that real fast and hopefully we have zero issues. And you guys, I'm gonna be honest, I'm in a little bit of a sour mood right now. When I was pulling into the branch, the county was parked just down the street. And now there's a drone flying over my property. So it's always kind of an eerie feeling when they're out here looking at you. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what it's about, but it does make me feel uneasy. I don't like it. So kind of bothered a little bit right now. Not a huge fan of them flying over my property and filming me. That's why I move out here to the middle of nowhere. Um, you know, I want to be left alone, but we'll see what ends up happening. So anyhow, I'm gonna go ahead and get this stuff offloaded. Uh, my buddy Mike just called me. They are gonna be doing something that's a little bit on the wild side and they may need a hand. So I'm not exactly sure what's gonna happen. I'm just kind of along for the ride, but they're trying to move some old stuff. And I don't know that I would necessarily do what they're about to do, but I'm gonna be there to help. So we'll see how it goes. And uh, yeah, let me go ahead and get this stuff unloaded. <laughs> and to top it off, got the tree guys here. This is gonna be awful. What a, like a perfect disaster. This is gonna be so bad. Oh boy. All right, well things have changed quite a bit since the last time I was here. Check this out, they actually got that thing moved. All right, well just got back. You guys are all familiar enough with me that I'm uh, opposed to doing sketchy stuff every once in a while, but this one was just like a little over the top. This is one that someone could have gotten really. So we decided to go ahead and not do it. So I am excited to be back because I'm gonna get cranking on this thing. My goal is to have this operational tonight, for the most part. We'll see how it goes. If not tonight, tomorrow, because I actually don't have anything scheduled for tomorrow. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, you guys can see my welding bottles out here. We're gonna drag them in, get them hooked up to the Miller 255, and uh, finish up welding those bottom hinges. Then I'll start building the top hinge. Come on, come on, come on, come on. There we go. Sealed for your protection. All right, so every welder in the world is gonna know this, but I still find this kind of stuff fascinating. These bottles have so much pressure in them, it's unreal. My air compressor over there, I think it shuts off at about 150 PSI, which is quite a bit of PSI. But these guys, if you look at this gauge right here, it goes into the thousands of PSI. So this tank was just filled. I haven't turned it on yet. We're gonna go ahead and open it up and see where it hangs out. Just a little under 2000 PSI. So not to sound too dorky, but I would love to see the machine or the process or however they're able to cram 2000 pounds of pressure into this bottle right here. You guys, that's just like mind blowing pressure. If that tank were to blow up right now, I'd be dead for sure. But regardless, we're gonna go ahead and uh, we're gonna finish up welding that flange right there, get that one welded. All right, well absolutely nothing has changed other than the fact that they're welded in place now, but this thing is looking super, super cool. So the next thing that I gotta figure out is we gotta build like some sort of saddle right here because we're gonna be having like a big cross piece that comes down probably if I had to guess about right here more or less. And I've got a beautiful piece of four inch square tubing outside that's just gonna work great. I'm gonna have to cut a couple things off of it. It came from some scrap metal that my buddy Mike brought out. And yeah, let me go ahead and get that dragged in here. So if I keep building stuff one stick at a time, eventually I will not have this pile anymore. Now it would be easy enough just to like go ahead and pick all this stuff up and throw it against the fence. But then I would completely forget about it. 
probably never build anything. So if I keep this ugly pile right here, eventually I want to use it all. So anyhow, this is what we're gonna be using. As you guys can see, it has a couple different flanges on it. We gotta get rid of that. And we're gonna get rid of that. We do not need those. And now that I'm out here looking at it, I actually hope it's long enough. It would be easier to bring a tape measure out here, but I'm just gonna drag it in the shop. And if it's not long enough, we'll figure something else out. Maybe I'll uh, cut 12 inches off of that one and weld it to this one, but let's hope it's long enough. It is a little bit on the heavy side because I'm not as strong as I used to be. So it's a little bit heavier than I actually thought it was going to be. Kind of rethinking my choice to, to bring it in here on my shoulder, but I'm already halfway. All right, so typically I never have this kind of luck. Usually anything that I'm working with is always like half an inch too short and I got to get creative, but I think this piece right here is literally the perfect length. And when I say the perfect length, I think it's like almost exactly what the distance between that downward piece right there is and this one right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and measure it, but the reason that this might be so perfect is that because when it gets lifted up, it needs to be able to slide on this side of this piece of C-channel right here. So let's go ahead and see how long this thing actually is. We have 114 and a half heavy. Just a little bit over 114 and a half. And as much as I would like to hold the camera and do this, I just don't have those kind of skills. So we're gonna set this down, get a number real quick. And then use both my hands. See, inside, the inside, we are looking at 116 exactly. So like 95% of the stuff I build, I usually design it as I go. I just kind of have like an end result of where I wanna get. And when I put this up here, I think it was just initially put here to kind of hold everything in place. And honestly, I don't remember because I started this thing like three years ago, but the more and more I look at it, I think I'm gonna leave that because if I were to weld it better here, here, basically on every other one, um, this would have no problem supporting the weight of just the one bar. That's pretty thick steel. So I may end up leaving that. So that's gonna make building the rest of this way easier because all I'm gonna have to do is weld the flange up to here, bring it down, we'll go ahead and secure this or weld this to it. We'll do the same on the other side. And then all I have to do is cut eight more of them, weld them in place, and then I think the screen for the most part is actually gonna be done other than the side skirts. But it will be operational. And I just got the 299 back today, so I'm actually gonna be putting this thing to work probably tomorrow if I can get it done tonight. So I got a lot of work that's gotta get done with it, so I'm super excited to actually get this thing done. So we're gonna go ahead and cut this off cut that off, and then we'll start to mock things up. So as I was grinding, I had this great idea. I think all of my brain turned on that instead of working hard and doing all of the mocking up and all of the fabricating up here, I'm gonna go ahead and leave this bar in place because right now it is set exactly where it needs to be in reference to this. If I cut the metal pieces that are gonna connect this four inch bar to the three inch bar, in theory, when all of these are cut, welded in place, if they match up with those bars, they should match up with the bars up here once I lift it into place. So instead of doing a ton of work overhead, I'm just gonna mock everything up down here and then we'll basically lift this up into place and I'll have those ground down smooth already. And I should be able just to tack them in place and then do all of the welding. So it should make this way, way easier. But now I'm gonna have to go start walking around with a flashlight because I do not have any more of this metal. I gotta go find something that we're gonna use. I'm not exactly sure what I have, so I'm gonna have to start poking around and uh, hopefully I can find something tonight. If I can't, that's gonna kinda hinder my progress a little bit. So I'm gonna start walking around and hopefully I find something that I can use and I'll be back in just a little bit. All right, so I spent about the last 20 minutes walking around and I've come up with two options. I have a ton of this, uh, I think this is two inch square tubing. It's not mega thick wall, but it doesn't really need to be because all it's gonna be used for is pushing up on those bars. So it doesn't have to be super, super strong. Or the other option, which, kind of uh, steering away from this because I think it's gonna be a lot of work. I have this, which is basically a two and a half inch flat bar, but this stuff is like, uh, I think an inch and a half thick, which is way overkill. And to cut that stuff is gonna take a lot of time because I'm gonna have to put an angle in it and notch it. And I'm gonna have to weld it like with eight passes. 
So I want to build this thing to last, but also I don't want to spend forever making it because I want to use it tomorrow. So I think I'm going to go ahead and go with the two inch square tubing for now. We're going to use it. We're going to do a couple test runs. And then if it doesn't start working out and they start cracking, start breaking, maybe we'll just start switching them out one by one with this stuff. So I think for now, I think the two inch square tubing is going to win because this will not take me forever to cut and prep. Realistically, it's probably going to take, I don't know, maybe five minutes worth of cutting to prep each individual piece. So instead of taking like all day prepping these things, I'm going to go that route and have them prepped in a couple hours. So yeah, I think using this two inch square tubing is going to be a no brainer. I think we're going to be able to get roughly five or six uprights out of one of these. And I got two or three, I think maybe even four more of them over there. So we'll have more than enough. We're going to cut them at 18 inches and then we're going to go ahead and uh, make the seat cuts. And so we might actually lose a little bit and they might be just a little bit shy of 18 inches, but regardless, we're going to have more than enough material out of this stuff. So let's get cutting. All right, so today's gonna be a big day today. We got the tractor boy up here with us. He's hanging out in the shop and he's very excited because he's gonna learn how to do what today? I'm gonna learn how to weld. Weld. Are you excited for this? Yeah. Yeah? So we'll probably just put a couple pieces for him to practice on. We'll see how he does. So I'm excited. I've always wanted to have him pick up the welding gun and give it a shot. So let's go ahead and get some of these pieces cut and then we'll see how good he does. All right, so before we actually turn this thing on, we're just letting him do a little bit of practice, I'm trying to show him that you want to keep it on the shiny. You're going a little too high, and you want to kind of put it more like this, buddy. Okay? So you want to get that wire right into that inside corner. And you want to start from up here and just work your way back real slow, okay? Not oh, too fast. Kind of like this. Bring it up a little bit. There you go. And when it's on, it'll be like... And you just want to go real slow, okay? All right, give it another shot. Yeah, kind of like that. Yeah, a little fast there at the end. You want to give it a go? Uh, sure. Okay, let's turn it on. All right, well, let's see how this goes. Let's get the welder turned on. Gas opened up. Here we go. All right, you see how that works? Oh, yeah. yeah, you did pretty good. You see how you grab the top and the bottom? Yeah. Try and grab the bottom just a little bit more. Starting. No. Nope, no, no. Start right there. And you want to move it back and forth just a little bit, okay? Well, that was a lot of weld. That's okay. All right, start over here and try coming back this way. No, nope, start right there. Let's see, mm, little fast. See how you went? You got one big ball right there, another yeah. small ball. You wanna do a nice, slow, uniform pass, okay? Try it again. Okay, let's see. Yeah, that was a little better, not too yeah. bad. But you're only grabbing this piece up here. You need to come up and you need to grab the bottom side too. See how the weld's up too high? Yeah. You want to come down here like this. Oh, shield your eyes again. What? Put the hood on. Okay, watch how I do this, okay? You see how I went back and forth yeah. and grabbed the top and bottom? That's how you do it. But not too bad for your first back try. Back, back forward. Yep. What did you think of welding? I think it was awesome. You think it was awesome? Yeah. All right, so I'm going to do some more prep work real quick. He wants to keep going. We'll let him get some more practice. So that way he can start building these things instead of me. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> you ready? Yeah. All right, go for it. With this? Now, how did that get there? Oops. 
just gonna knock it off. A little bit better. You gotta go back and forth, okay? Okay. Should we let this cool down? You're fine. You can keep going. Just don't touch it. Okay. You, okay. you, you, went, too, you went too far. Come back. Like this? Yep. There you go. What do you think? Is that a good one? Yeah. Hmm. Mm, getting there. All right, well, a lot of grinding, a lot of cutting later. We got pretty much every vertical piece cut. We got all the edges ground down, clean for the most part. I went ahead and ground down this main bar just a little bit more. Got it kind of smooth, kind of clean. Got a real nice, good weld. So I was getting ready to go ahead and start tacking these in place, starting to get things squared up. Then I realized there may be a slight issue with how we're doing things. Now, when I built this, I think I built it pretty square, but I don't know exactly for sure that when we take this bar and move it up top, that the three inch bars that are up here are gonna line up perfectly with how we have these in place. So I'm not gonna weld the bottom ones like completely 100%. I'll probably just do like a very heavy tack in each corner. And when we lift it up to the top, I can probably bend it a little bit if it's not too much. If it's a whole lot, we'll have to cut the welds off re-tack it, but I think for the most part, we're gonna go ahead and um, tack these in place. We'll get things squared up, then we'll go ahead and lift it up into place. I'm probably gonna have to weld like a little bar right there to actually set this on top of to work and get all that stuff cleaned up. But, but everything's always a work in progress, so I'm gonna go ahead and start getting these tacked in place, and hopefully my idea works. Don't be afraid of the dark, be careful with stars Not every light is gonna guide you, baby Don't let it rain on your spark, keep it close to your heart All of the pressure's gonna drive you crazy Cause you rise to the madness In the morning it's all gonna vanish Don't be afraid of the dark, be careful with stars Not every light is gonna guide you yeah, when I blow up, I'ma soar high like Peter Pan In real life, be living all my dreams If I'm waking up, it's in a foreign land Whole wrist covered up in ice Dealership, never ask the price I hit the molly ball with my dogs Yeah, I swipe it once without thinking twice Cause this is what I was made for Man, I know this what I came for On a big stage, couple thousand people And they do whatever I say so Have chicks that color the rainbow Yeah, chains on me like Django Be a long way from my tank low Cause my Tesla charge for them bank rolls And I'm grinding, money on my mind And I'm headed to the top I won't stop until I find it Write my name in diamonds But all these lights are blinding I wonder is it worth it Feel like I'm losing my mind Yeah, remind me All right guys, just got called out for work and my wife came up here to look at the dirt screen. And as I'm showing her, I'm like, oh yeah, this is gonna be so cool. And then I realized I super, super screwed up. Um, and I'm glad she came up here to look at it because had she not have done that, I would have started welding these in place. And I don't know what I was thinking because these bars are stationary. They need to be attached to these bars. So I'm gonna have to regrind this entire bar, um, basically make it clean where it's not clean, reattach these. I gotta cut one more upright. Sometimes I just do bonehead things and this is one of those times. But I have to leave right now. Um, I don't think I'm gonna be back till late, late tonight. So I'll probably be working on it tomorrow because I'm an idiot and have to fix all this. But uh, all the hard parts done. Cutting that off, that's not very time consuming. Um, moving it over, it should only add probably like an hour to the project, but I'll be back at it tomorrow. See you guys.
All right, well, something super cool just happened. SDG need to turn the power off, which is just dandy because everything I do today needs electricity. So, so we're gonna go ahead and drag the old Caterpillar welder over here, get it fired up, and uh, hopefully we got enough gas to finish what we got going on today. This poor cat generator, she needs a little bit of love into her, uh, her start knob broke, so we've been using these to get her started. And uh, it is a little cold today, so we're gonna see how well this does. Come on. What in the world? There's worms in here. Or so I'm not sure how this happens, but somehow maggots got born in here. And uh, there is still gas in there. I'd say it's about half full. You know, I'd look at the gauge, but it's pretty well clouded over. So we're gonna go ahead and get rid of these things. Also, my GoPro keeps losing its mind. It keeps shutting off, even though it's got like a fully charged battery in it. So I'm not sure why it's doing that, but let's go ahead and see if we can pull start this thing. And since we're on the subject of SDG &E, I actually just saw one of their helicopters fly overhead, which reminded me I need to jump on the lawnmower. I got some grass I need to go cut because I think in like a week or two, they're actually gonna be coming out. Because I thought, because if I remember correctly, I think it's actually in like a week or two, they're gonna be bringing their helicopter out here and landing and flying some stuff out to somewhere out here. So I gotta go prep that area for them. But I do have the generator set up. We are gonna try and keep it on the quieter side of things. Um, I have a piece of paneling right here that's basically pushed out. So I ran the cables underneath it. And then we got them hooked up to the generator and I did get it started. So as soon as I get back from cutting the grass, we'll get this thing fired up. And I'm hoping, I know I keep saying this, but I'm hoping today's the day where I actually get to use the dirt screen. So let me go cut that grass and I'll be right back. And of course I go to start it and uh, well, battery's dead. So we're gonna have to let it charge up for a couple minutes and then we'll head up top, I guess. So since we have it running, I'm gonna go ahead and go in the shop. I know lighting's gonna be just awful because we don't really have any extra lighting up here. But since we got the generator running and I'm waiting for that battery to charge up, I'm gonna go ahead and cut all those loose because I super screwed up yesterday. I gotta make one more of those. And then hopefully we'll start making some progress. All right, so I went ahead and got all the vertical pieces cut off. You guys can see that the entire top surface is all nice, clean, smooth metal now. We don't have like the hodgepodge spots where we're only grinding it for every other one, which was incorrect, it needed to be on these bars. But I think the lawnmower's been on the charger long enough, so let's go ahead and go outside and see if we can get the thing to fire up. All right, well I don't have time to mess around today, so we're gonna go ahead and jump start this thing with some real power. Brought the GMC over here. We're gonna go ahead and get this thing hooked up. If she doesn't start with this, then we got some serious problems. But I'm pretty sure that this will do the trick. Hopefully our chances are better than 50-50. Let's see. Ah, oh, golden, golden. About speaker All right, let's go do some mowing. I'm looking for that. All right, so the only area that I really needed to get finished was this area right here. And then after I finished that up, I came over to do this hillside. I did one pass right there. And from the last time that I mowed this hillside to now, Apparently uh, some chicken wire decided to, to make its way into the dirt over here. And there is a piece of it that got caught up in the blades right here, stalled out the lawnmower, and now it won't start. So she's gonna sit here for now because I got finished what I needed to get done. And now I'm headed back to the shop. All right guys, well that same drone is back. And now he's hanging out right over my track. Not sure what he's doing. I just saw some surveying guys go by. I'm gonna go ahead and go over and uh, take a little trip. I'm gonna go talk to them. We like it nice, so we do it twice. Just kidding. Uh, I got every single one of these cut now. I'm gonna go ahead and get them tacked in place. And then we'll be back to where I pretty much was yesterday when I left, except this time it's correct. So let me go ahead and get these welded in place. Then we'll get this lifted up here. We'll get all of it marked out up top where we need to grind and clean up. And then we'll get it tacked in place up there. All right, so getting ready to see if everything that I have planned out actually works. 
But could you guys imagine this thing coming at you like full speed? That's kind of scary. That's like uh, some Mad Max looking stuff. Anyhow, we're gonna go ahead and slide this back, lift it upright. And I don't know how I'm gonna lift it up there yet, but I'll figure something out. And then we'll start on this side over here. You guys can see that we've got it ground clean all the way down to where it's gonna be attaching. All right, well, this is the part where we cross our fingers and hope everything goes well. We're able to get the push bar up here. My wife came up here and helped me get this thing in place. And I think that's roughly about how high it's gonna be. Now, all I need to do is bring it out and up a little bit and it's gonna attach right there. I'm not gonna be able to do this with the GoPro in my hand. So, we're gonna go ahead and set the camera down. I'll probably put it on a time lapse or figure something out. But we're gonna go ahead and uh, start attaching this thing. So I really hope that this actually works. It's not just like this massive failure, huge waste of my time, but you never know unless you try. So we're gonna go ahead and start welding this up. It's already looking pretty rad. I super like the way this looks. Looks pretty beefy, but uh, let's go ahead and get welding. I've been on the road, I've been doing shows. Now we ain't steak, remember sleeping on the flow. We still in at the gas station when the time's cold. In the kitchen, high still trying to flip it out the stove. Rocking fake J's, praying that nobody know. Watch them take my dog away, it was way too hard to stay composed. Fight to see the light of day, all this blood on my clothes. I was tired every day, green light, it's time to go. I don't wanna live life fast or die too young. Die too young. 100 miles per hour, I might crash, cause a good die young. Yeah, a good die young. Push it to the limit, I can't go no more Red light, no way I'm coming back home Long dirt road all on my own I'ma be the greatest, write my name in the stone Write my name in the stone Yeah, I'm coming back home Yeah, I'm coming back home Write my name in the stone Cause I'm coming back home Cause I'm coming back home where I left because I know my people needed me Diamond in the rough, I don't know what it is they see in me Go down as a legend in my city Cause we beat the streets Trying to spread the wealth around the block No, I can't keep from me Told me I should leave I see the bigger picture and it's way bigger than me Can't be living like a king But my people need to eat If I got it, then you got it We gon' get back on our feet And I put it on me I don't wanna live life fast Or die too young Or die too young Hundred miles per hour might crash Cause good die young yeah, but here I come Push it to the limit, I can't go no more Red light, no way I'm coming back home Long dirt road all on my own I'ma be the greatest, write my name in the stone Write my name in the stone Yeah, I'm coming back home Yeah, I'm coming back home Write my name in the stone Cause I'm coming back home Push it to the limit, I can't go no more Red light, no way I'm coming back home Long dirt road all on my own I'ma be the greatest, write my name in the stone Write my name in the stone Yeah, I'm coming back home Yeah, I'm coming back home Write my name in the stone Cause I'm coming back home Cause I'm coming back home That's not happening for sure. So I'm gonna go ahead and set the camera up over here seeing as I can successfully lift it so you guys can kind of see what it looks like from the backside. And now you guys might be able to understand a little bit better of why a self-cleaning screen is so cool. So let me go ahead and uh, get ready to lift this thing up again because it is not light. All right, so this might not seem like super cool or unique or out of the ordinary to some of you guys, but to me, this is like a huge deal because I have screened so many truckloads of dirt in my life. There was one job where it was just like every day we were screening dirt and we're talking hundreds of truckloads. So any time that you can save is a win. And the reason this saves time is because when this starts to get plugged up, sometimes you gotta pick up the screen, shake it around, drag it back and forth, kick the rocks out, actually get out of the tractor and sometimes start kicking them out. 
manually. But if you guys can do it from inside the cab, just a quick push of the bars, that'll probably save you at least two minutes every time you gotta clean this thing out. So I'm super excited. The next step of this is we gotta drag it out there and actually test it. All right, well I just forgot that I had only welded these halfway. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish up welding all of this full seam all the way around. Might as well get it done while it's in here and then we'll drag it out and we're gonna go test it. And there is one last thing that I also need to do, it's super easy though. I'm gonna go ahead and push this bar in. I'm gonna weld like a flat cap on here. Um, and eventually we'll put like some sort of pin in there, but I just need to make it so that I do not lose this pin inside there. If it starts to walk out, not to the end of the world, I'll just push it back in. But I do not wanna lose it inside here, so we need to limit how far back it can go. But as far as the dirt screen goes, we are done for the day. There is still a couple things that need to happen. I do have to put the sides or the aprons or the berm or perimeter or whatever you wanna call this. I need to finish boxing this in. But as far as actually using it, we're gonna go ahead and give it a whirl. There's just one thing that I gotta do, the 299 real quick. We're gonna go ahead and make our way back here. It's got a little bit of a leak, so I'm gonna lift the cab up, see where it's coming from, and then once that's done, we'll top it off. We'll come around here, we'll rip that thing out of there, take it up to my dirt pile, and we'll start screen dirt. All right, we'll get into where that leak was. Took way longer than I initially planned on. You guys can see that I uh, had a little bit on the dirty side getting to where it was. It's like all the way back. There was an O-ring that had failed at the bottom of the pump. Not a very enjoyable place to get to. So because of that, it's a little bit on the dark side out there. And so we're gonna go ahead and get this thing dragged out. I do have the 299 warming up. I'm just letting it run through some of its cycles, get some pressure built up, see if we did fix the leak for sure, because it was pretty substantial and I do not like leaking hydraulic fluid. So as soon as that gets warmed up and I double check that it's not leaking, I'm gonna bring it around here. We're gonna pull this thing out. We're gonna set it up and I am determined to put at least one bucket of dirt through this today. That is my goal. I do have to feed the animals too, um, just never ends. So as soon as all that stuff gets done, we'll go ahead and drag this out and actually put some dirt through it. I was gonna put my hoodie on, but I don't wanna just destroy the inside of it. And I think, oh, this arm's not as bad, but this one, I don't want that inside my hoodie. So I'm gonna suffer for just a little bit, gonna run out and feed the animals. And hopefully by the time I'm done, the 299 is nice and warm inside. All right, well, got everything cleared out of the way. It's probably gonna drag some of the dirt out with it. I don't know if you guys have noticed in the background, but we got my buddy Dylan's 259 over here right now. We're gonna be giving it some love tomorrow. I just had to move it out of the way real quick because we're gonna be dragging this straight back. Then I'm gonna swap out the forks with a bucket because I'm hoping that I can wedge the bucket underneath right there and pick it up like I did with all my other dirt screens. That's the plan. Hopefully it's like balanced correctly to do that, but let's go and get this thing dragged out. I'm so excited. Oh, this thing's heavy. Hopefully we got enough to room to back up before we hit the end dump. It's looking like it. Beautiful. I love the heater so much on this stinking thing. It is freezing outside and I'm nice and toasty in here. Uh, so yeah, I can't complain too much, but I'm gonna have to hop out in just a second because we're gonna be swapping over to the bucket so we can actually screen some dirt. Like I said, today is the day I'm screening dirt with that thing. I've been trying to get it done for like a week, just has not been able to happen, but today is the day. All right, well here goes test number one. We are coming up to the back side of the dirt screen. Let's go ahead and lift the bucket up. All right, well, so far so good. It is up in the air. Um, seems to be pretty well balanced. It is pretty heavy though. Uh, it is making the 299 bob just a little bit, but not too bad. I don't think it's gonna be an issue. Let's go ahead and lift it up a little more. All right, let's get this thing turned around. Let's head up to the dirt pile. 
All right, so we're gonna go ahead and do a couple tests. We're gonna do the cleaning portion of it. We're gonna push up on this crossbar right here, which is gonna pick up all the other bars. I don't think you guys are gonna be able to pick it up on camera too well, but you guys can kind of see it like rotating back right there. Okay, that works great. Hopefully I didn't build this thing too tall. Let's go ahead and do a dump test. We're gonna go over here, get a little scoop of dirt. Okay. Back it on up. Come on over. Luckily the 299 goes pretty high. Uh, I think we're gonna be okay. Realistically, I probably could have built it maybe six inches shorter, but I think we're gonna be fine. Let's go ahead and dump and see how it actually screens. The first scoop through the new screen. Oh, beautiful. All right, so you guys see, we already have one rock there wedged in the center. And that's why the self-cleaning part of this is so cool because eventually rocks will just keep building up, building up, building up, and it'll slow down the efficiency of your screen. So once it starts to get real bad, you're gonna go ahead and lift that up and it'll clean it up. But what you wanna do before you actually lift this up is clean all the dirt out that's here already because when you lift up those bars, it may let the rocks fall through. So we're gonna go ahead and back up a little bit. Well, let me do a quick little shake. Oh, I still got some more dirt. I had a lot more dirt. Okay, let's go ahead and back it on up. Oh, and that rock disappeared. So I'm gonna go ahead and run like 10 scoops through this thing and uh, kind of just get a feel for it and then we'll probably wrap this video up. All right, so screen is working super good. You guys can already tell that we have a pretty hefty pile right here and it's already starting to go out the sides. That's why we need to box this thing in, but I was just super excited to use this thing and, and it's not the end of the world if like a little bit of dirt starts to push its way out, especially out here, but like on a job site where you're trying to contain everything, those side skirts are a must. So let's go ahead and go around to the back side and see what it's looking like, see what the spoils piles look like, see if there's a bunch of dirt that's like overflowing or if it's like a pretty clean screen. All right, you guys can see it right there. We got the chunks of concrete and there's really not a whole lot of dirt that's making its way through. So the screen, huge success. This thing is super awesome. Sorry for the late at night video, but that's just kind of the way it is tonight. So I'm gonna go ahead and wrap things up and run back down to the shop real quick. One last test that I wanna do. I wanna see if this bar will actually hit the tractor if I go all the way in. That's the only thing that I've been kind of worried about. All right, so here we go with the last test. We got some dirt cleared out. We're just gonna slowly make our way in. Oh, we hit the back wall. We got a couple inches to spare. So pretty much everything on this dirt screen is working out how I had originally planned on. And you guys, just look at this beautiful pile of dirt right there. Looking super, super good. All right, well I think the dirt screen was a huge success. Now originally when I set out to build it, I did build it with a backhoe in mind. I was not imagining that I would be screening dirt with this, but it does work really good. So I think if we had a backhoe out here, it would be like super perfect. If the 299 could go up like maybe another six inches, then it would be ideal. So. I'm not gonna complain, works great with the 299. So we can either like build up a little pad of dirt or just live with it. I'm able to screen just fine how it is, but I am super excited to have that thing almost done because I got big plans for it, but I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this video up because it's cold and I'm getting a little bit tired. So thank you guys for watching. If you need a huge solid like, subscribe, share this with amigos, hit that notification button down below so you guys can continue to see other projects that we're always working on and I'll see you guys next time, later.